It's、uh, raining fairly hard outside, so I decided to do this、uh, exercise, shibashi, tai chi.、Uh, idea is about calm and quiet mind that I mentioned in the other videos. And more I want to practice in daily life. Usually I do in the morning and in the evening, but I decide to do much more because what I see that I'm experiencing this seems to be quite important. I'm always curious in exploring what may be the potential I have, we have, and going through this, say, awakening experience, we call it Banga. In Vipassana, kind of like Kensho or Satori in Zen, is to find that the whole body cells seem to be excited about the potentials we got. And that I feel that as if my whole body is vibrating. And whenever I have this calm and quiet mind, whether it's in meditation, as I sit, Or doing this Tai Chi or the Shibashi, or even the Aikido, I used to do more often. There are those moments that resonate my full body, my full existence. And that is tied to the idea I talk about the common quiet mind. In the other video, I mentioned I want to explore more since I have a quiet time. And I can dip into it. So I promised myself that I want to do more and more of this. As a first step, I thought I'd make this video. Whoever came up with this, I don't know. But what I have experienced from the first time, I felt something is resonating. And reminded me of the time when I had this awakening experience, when my whole body was vibrating and like feeling like I was in plasma. I didn't know what that meant. And it took years to figure out. But one thing I can say is that that experience is like opening up a new channel to myself deep within. And I'm not going to go into detail of how it happened and all that because I have spent writing about it and some videos talking about it. But as I have mentioned about the importance of calm and quiet mind, and more I want to practice it, given my age of almost going 73, and、uh, living here alone and have time and freedom. To explore more about my potential. I've written books about you know, self management, fully utilizing our talent. I talked about waste elimination, and the worst waste is not to utilize our talent or the potential. I also talked about the results from the heart, another book where I got the Dalai Lama gave me the forward about how to use our brain or the mind. While listening to the heart. And all that kind of merges together and connects together to the point where I am, that I have been expressing those ideas in YouTube videos in many different ways. The whole issue cannot be described by words, but from this angle, that angle, This example, that example, and putting things together, it became or becoming clear as to how we may access the potential within us. So, as I mentioned in the previous video, the recent video, about the point of calm and quiet mind related to what they call samadhi, the mind. Is empty, no mind. But there is something in that nothingness which moves. And I 
mentioned calling it like coming something out of the unconscious. The things that was unconscious become conscious is awakening. And that's the experience I had. And I'm just trying to share my personal experience, not to brag about it or anything, but rather to, for me, number one, to see what it is. Something miraculous, amazing, can happen as much as I mentioned elsewhere that we are the dust of the universe, but we are born and we can communicate. That's the most miraculous things of all that I can see. And this experience of vibration, the life energy, spaciousness, at calm and quiet mind, samadhi, absorption. It's not to go into, well, we can call it the alternative way of, uh, or different dimension of our existence, but I don't mean to make it like a religious thing or anything of that nature, but more scientific because of my background in science or engineering and curiosity never stops to the point that I'm now trying to share this on this video. Some friend told me actually, he doesn't have that sense of vibration or the connection. And I think that's very normal. I didn't have it before. There's lots of discussion about chi or ki in Japanese. For example, kuki is the air. It's the empty ki, empty energy, that's what it says in Japanese. Kiko or kigon is a kigon. Um, and the ki is again energy. Gong is effect of that. That may be useful for your health. Kuki, kiko, genki is another Japanese term. Gen is the source. And the ki is energy, the source of energy. So when we say ogenki desuka, that means uh, are, you, are you healthy, are you good? And you say, yes, uh, thank you, I am. And that means genki desu, hi genki desu, yes, I have a connection to the source of my energy. <laughs> Usually people don't think like that, but the origin of the word ki is explained in various manners, including those. If you feel it, there's something about our existence that may not be understood by the brain or the mind. Mind has limitation. It just added later in our evolution. It has its use, like a computer. There are lots of logic and everything and your IQ may be enhanced by you know, thinking and being able to use that brain power. But wisdom is more rooted from our existence. That's the way I feel. There's intelligence, but wisdom is much more than that. There are unknown things that we have to explore. In Zen, which is perhaps foreign to many people, they talk about the origin as if asking this kind of question. Who are you before your father and mother was born? Show it to me. <laughs> That's one of the core, the puzzle, conundrum. It's a, it's a tough one because some people may spend years sitting, meditating to figure out that is. And my experience in Vipassana is kind of like that. I was sitting for 10 days and I had some issues to break through. And on that occasion, there was that Banga experience of connecting to the root of our existence, so to speak. So when I show this movement, that is the way that I can feel everywhere as if all my cell body is responding to that movement and my hand goes up and down or sideways and put them together and movement this way and this way 
whatever the case may be, as I do it, there is that uh, freedom, no boundary kind of a sense that I feel. It may well be unrecognizable or foreign. That's fine. I didn't know what it was. This was perhaps 30, 40 years ago. The Kiko, the Kigon, and I think uh, what was his name? Hirano? There was a guy who talked about it. It's kind of related to martial art. And I tried it, I didn't feel it. The sensation coming up from the sole of your foot and all that stuff. The point is not the form, but the substance. And to find the way to connect to the root of our being. The way I can explain is that when you watch the wonderful movie and you are moved, or when you listen to the music, and when you are moved and be one with the musician, the song, whatever that is, or beautiful sunset, the scenery, or sunrise in the morning, or the flowers, the tiny flowers on the roadside, just swinging in the wind. They all bring us something, and we may be inspired. When we go traveling and open up our eyes to see something different, they are full of curiosity that the we happen to accept everything. Oh, I remember a uh, case of the orca, the big uh, killer whale just popped up when I was out maybe three months ago on the ocean. And a dozen of them came close to the boat. And I felt the sensation all around me. If you have an experience like that in the nature, your view of nature will be different. You want to appreciate, you do appreciate, as if I'm talking about the existence is exi appreciation of who we are here, the miracle. The nature is full of the miracle and we are one of them. Or just listen to the birds singing or the, see the clouds moving. Well, in this case today, listening to the raindrops and the wind. And I'm in the house, peaceful. Even reminding me of the poem Buddha talked, that he is secured in the house when it's raining outside. So it's a physical sen sense of what it is, but also can be interpreted as when things are hard and difficult, you can still retain that peace in your mind. I think that's what he meant with the analogy of sitting in the house when it's stormy outside, but everything is taken care of. So that's the peace we can call the happiness, or appreciation of life, whatever the term is. And as an explorer of life, that I want to call myself, because I've been curious about exploring in every direction to figure out what's going on in life. That's the root of, <laughs> after all, something that we have inside of us. We look for the solution outside in terms of the forms, even this taichi or shibashi. The form is important. Well, form is just a tool to connect to some resonance, the being with nature, to remind us about something very important. We are coming from there, we are that, and we are moving on with that. And whatever happens, that's the way of nature. 
I mentioned that experience of near death. They call it NDE, I didn't know it, near death experience. Funny thing is I was doing some training as if I was facing death. That's part of the Zen training. Why do you do that? I don't know if I can explain well. It's the sincerity and truthfulness I emphasize about whatever comes to me, I retain that and accept whatever. There are lots of things beyond human comprehension. Whether you call that nature or God or anything else, it's just the world. But the sense that I got had some something to know about what that is. And that's the experience of awakening or opening. And we since we are all coming from there, our mind may block our access to it, but when our mind is empty or calm and quiet, we may find that. When the mind is busy, of course, it's like watching the TV screen, you know, all the different movies and commercials and attractions and what you have, you don't have, what need to be done and what the next thing to do, the mind gets busy. But that's also, it could be very interesting and productive, but may lose something. So it's very counterintuitive to talk about no mind or emptying the mind. But I think we all know that in a different degrees perhaps, but if you do the painting, and you're into the zone, or you're running, or bicycle, swimming, or skiing, surfing. When you are into the zone, you are not thinking. If you think, you're too late, usually. And the mastery comes when the mind is free, and we can access that unknown potential within us. I call it unconsciousness. Unconscious because we don't know it consciously, usually. But we have the opening to access that if you find it. That's the part of exercise. So the entry to get there, there are many of them. One of the Zen monk named Ikkyu said something like, uh, there are many passages to go up to the top of the mountain many entry point, but you climb up to the top, all of us, we get there, see the moon, the same moon. In the Buddhist Sutra, they talk about, was that 800 delusion, 801, I forgot the number, but anyway, many, many delusionary thought that we can have, and we get troubled. <laughs> But that's the entry point to get to the other side, which is the awakening from that delusion or suffering, that human created suffering. So, to long story short, just to get to the point, the video or the intention of this is about a way that I found is meaningful for me. It may not be for you, or it may be for you, but not now. Or there may be other means to get there, like a di different entry point for climbing up the mountain. What I have been doing in YouTube video is to share my experience. We may call it experiential wisdom, the wisdom coming from actually personal experience so that I can enrich that and by talking I'm confirming what I went through to capture that in logic to the best of my ability 
so that I don't lose it. Again, I mentioned about memory and habit. If you have those experiences important or meaningful, we want to capture it and make use of it. It's like a triangulating or synthesizing all the element of experiences for our benefit. So this video is just one of those. It may point something and you might want to remember it or you may come back later. We may check with other videos on the document or sutra, whatever that is, to find your way. Thank you. May all beings be happy.